Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, November uh, 2nd school committee meeting uh, re being handled uh, remotely on uh, Microsoft Teams. And tonight's meeting, as the agenda uh, indicates, was is called specifically to discuss the uh, superintendent search process. Uh, we this is, I guess, our kickoff meeting with our our uh, newly engaged uh, consultant, uh, Massachusetts Association of School Committees, and our representative, uh, Dorothy uh, Presser, uh, is in attendance as well and will uh, guide us uh, through the agenda and the meeting. Uh, with the on the uh, on the agenda specifically, uh, actually, bef I made him. Took, I took one night off and I already forgot. I got to do a roll call vote. Uh, John? Here. Uh, Aaron? Here. Tom? Here. Sean? Here. Carla? Here. Chuck? Apologize for that. Uh, the uh, agenda will run through is, it, is the first the timeline, uh, which we'll need to vote on. Uh, and then the uh, online survey and the uh, focus group composition and the uh, screening committee uh, composition. Uh, in terms of public input input for tonight, uh, we have the live chat. Uh, the residents are welcome to uh, post uh, Chat, chat, or uh, public comment for things not on the agenda. Uh, we won't, we won't address any of those tonight. Uh, we will address those on Thursday night. But uh, again, residents are welcome to, and uh, we will acknowledge them and read them tonight. But we won't be uh, dialoguing until on those when we have the superintendent here and staff in case we need them and in, in in answering any questions that come up. Uh, again, uh, this is our kickoff meeting uh, for the superintendent search. As I know, I know everybody here uh, knows how important this uh, role is of ours, and and uh, you know, and we're very pleased to have uh, you know the guidance of the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, and specifically uh, Dorothy. So. Uh, I didn't know if you uh, want to. We we can. I guess we do have a a hard stop of somewhere around like 6:45 ish because Dorothy has a another meeting at uh, 7 p.m. So we'll try to to accommodate that. So I don't know. If we want to just jump right into the timeline, unless anybody has any questions. Okay. OK, well, let's jump in then. Um, I'm nice to meet those of you I haven't met before, and I'm very happy to be here tonight. Uh, so if you look at the timeline, which I know was in your packet, um, the uh, I guess the search executive committee, Tom and Chuck and I met last week and really went through the timeline pretty carefully, making sure that we were avoiding dates that were problematic to for other Reading meetings. Um, and uh, added some more detail to what the original draft timeline had been. So I Gail, really, I that, guess. I'm I'd sorry, like to, Dor is that something we can share on the screen or or not? Tom, do you you have it there? I have it here if you want me to. Yeah. It, would that be good, Dorothy, to have it up yeah, there? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. No problem. There you go. Everybody see it? Yes. OK. Dorothy, back to you. OK, so I guess uh, my I would ask if anyone has any questions or sees any concerns with the timeline. Aaron, it looks like you have a question. 
Oh, I didn't see um, that. I'm just curious, when you um, conduct all of the focus groups, are we expected to be at those? Are we welcome to be at those? Or generally, do the school committee members not participate in all yeah. of those? So generally, um, we uh, feel like we would like community members and staff and parents to be able to speak their piece openly. Um, and sometimes that means that it's better actually if you let the, your consultant, let me, um, con conduct the focus groups without school committee presence. You're, there are open meetings, you're welcome to attend, but so there's a, a little bit of a balance to be held there. I would say particularly for the ones that are staff, administration, um, that it would be better if school committee were not present for those. It would be more the community parent ones um, where if you wanted to um, to be there, that would be more appropriate. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Carla. Thank you, Chuck. Um, Dorothy, is this a typical timeline? Um, it just seems like it's we're posting the position on November 30th and the application de deadline is January 4th. Is is it looks like it's a little over four weeks. Is that a typical? Um, that is a pretty that is a pretty typical timeline. Um, what we have found uh, in the past couple of years, um, particularly is that it doesn't really matter what your timeline is, whether it's you know four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks, the vast majority of the applications are gonna come in the last few days. Okay. So you know we've gotten as many applications when we have a three or a four week um, application period as we do if we have a six week application period. Okay. It, it to me it seems a little short just because um, you know we're, we're going to be on this early. Um, it just seems like that could be a little longer, but um, if that's something that's typically done, I'm, I'm OK with that. Well, and that's certainly your prerogative if yes. uh, the committee feels that it wants to extend it a little longer. I, I think my my initial reaction would be to extend it longer. Um, I don't I don't know how anybody else feels about it. Because it looks like by February 11th we will be appointing a new superintendent, um, so it seems like we do have time. I, I would I would almost would rather extend it even by two weeks to to a six week time period. OK, well, we can hold that for a minute. And uh, I know Sean had a uh, question. Yeah, it was in the same vein as Carla. I'm not I'm not so concerned about the amount of time that it's open, um, but recognizing Dorothy, your comment that the, the applications often come in in those last few days. Um, I wonder if I wonder if we might think about at a minimum uh, having the deadline be later in that week so that it's not sort of just coming out of what people will view as the holiday, you know, as the holiday period. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly open to what Carla was suggesting around a longer timeline generally, but, you know, at a minimum, not that sort of first day back out of the holidays is probably something we want to avoid. Okay. okay. John? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with pushing it that week. I wouldn't extend it to the six week time frame, knowing the number of positions that are currently open in the state alone. Um, it, it, the resumes we're going to get are what we're going to get, whether it's four or six weeks. Um, I'd worry more of keeping it open. We're not going to see any value to it. So, so Dorothy, if the if the deadline were the 8th of January, for instance, would we still be able to I mean, I, you know, I don't know what you need to do to sort of turn around the applicants for the screening committee, but would that still enable that meeting on the 11th to go forward? Uh, it would allow it to go forward. Um, 
it would allow it to go forward as long as the screening committee is really ready to um, buckle down and do some quick work and looking at all the resumes and be ready to make some decisions on the 11th. Does anyone uh, else have any thoughts on the extending the resume here, Tom? So, um, you know, looking at it and hearing the feedback, I would be amenable to extending a little bit. I do want to be cautious of quite a very busy January month um, and a lot of the, the other meetings that people are going to be involved in in January. Um, that's part of the reason why we were a little forward in that in that time frame was even though it looks like there's time in between January 5th and January 19th. When you think about all the other stuff that's going on, there really isn't a lot of time in there. Um, and we try to be very careful about the time time frame there. Um, so if we were to say that it was due maybe the 8th or the 9th and the packet was ready for the screening committee for a weekend review, that means the screening committee is working over the weekend as opposed to having the week to review most of the materials. Um, if we then said maybe we could flex the 11th to the 12th or the 13th to give them a little bit of time, um, but we can't go to the 14th because we have a budget meeting on the 14th. So we start hitting up and against all the other meetings that uh, mm -hmm. we as a group have, and there will there will be, we're going to cover this shortly, but there'll be two of us on that screening committee as well. So we have to be careful of that. Um, so while it looks like there's time, when you think about all the interview slots that are available, when you look at look at the rest of the schedule, there really is not a lot of time built in there for for fluff or extra time necessarily. Um, so so if caution I could, a little bit there. Sorry, Tom. No, if go I ahead, could just jump in. You could push that. You could push that Tuesday 19th, perhaps a day or two. Um, once the final, once the committee decides who the semifinalists are, um, then I would need to contact them to set up interviews. Also, want a little bit of turnaround time for them to get ready for the interview. Um, and then if you start to push things out too much, um, February 11th is before February vacation. And you don't really want to split things too much necessarily to um, between before and after February vacation for some of that work. Um, so it, um, that's going to push you more towards the end of February, early March before you get to a decision which isn't awful by any means, but just so you're aware that you know starting to push things out with mm -hmm. vacations in there um, might have more of an impact than it appears uh, to begin with. Dorothy, is there uh, if we say agree to this uh, four week timeline tonight and once we're in it, is there is can we change it midstream or, or decide uh, at the end of that four weeks that we wanted to extend it longer? Or, I mean, we've done that in other types of searches, I know, but I don't know whether we can do it in this one. This uh, you could, you could, and we would get word out that the uh, deadline was extended. Okay. Aaron? I was just going to say, I, I would agree with extending it beyond Monday, January 4th, just given, um, you know, Sean's point about that being right on the heels of the holiday. But um, but I, I don't know that I would be in favor of extending it much beyond that week, um, just given all the pieces <laughs> that have to happen, um, have to happen after that. Uh, thank you, Tom. Just an additional point about any extensions after we publish this is um, when we talk to the when we ask for applicants for the screening committee, we're asking them to commit to the dates for the screening committee interviews as well. So we cannot necessarily adjust those really too much afterwards and keep and promise to keep the screening screening committee impact in, intact. So we want to be careful about mm -hmm. any late adjustments. Um, so I would position that if we're going to make adjustments, we make them today. Um, at the latest, if we need to make another late adjustment, we make them before we market this stuff um, 
which puts us to like November 23rd, November 20, November 30th, right? But we, but when we put it out there, we put it out there, and those are the dates that we stick to, and we're good, and go forward with that. And whoever comes in comes in um, at that point. So, you know, looking at it and thinking about Dorothy's feedback as well with regards to making sure that the applicants have enough time to prepare. From my perspective, the latest I'd be willing to go is say that it closes on the 7th, which is a Thursday, and then we have that committee uh, selection meeting on the 12th, which is a Tuesday. Um, there's nothing for us to do as a committee for that 7th that those applicants go to Dorothy and she would have then Friday to prepare the packet for the screening committee meeting to review screening committee com members to review over the weekend and into Monday going into Tuesday where they have to select the semifinalists that they would then start interviewing on the 19th. That gives about a week of notification for those semifinalists to prepare themselves, pick one of the interview slots appropriately and get themselves ready um, for that for those slots, which I think is respectful of their time and Sean's point. It's a very valid point around the holidays. Also respectful of the committees, the screening committee's time um, and the candidates. So that would be my proposal. I'd be willing to make that amendment if if, uh, if others would would agree. Yeah, Tom, so I I agree with with what everything you said. The the reason why I brought up the changing midterm is. Uh, you know, sometimes you're in a I would never advocate for that unless we were in a dire situation where we just weren't getting enough applications in time. So that that's really the only reason I brought that up. Yeah. Uh, so one other thing that might uh, give you a bit of comfort is this is already up on our website as an upcoming search, and I can pretty much guarantee that there are people that already are watching for um the material you know when the application um when the application will be available and when the application deadline is mm -hmm. okay thank you uh sean um two things one is um if we're going to vote this do we need do we need a motion before we should start talking about specific i don't know if it matters um but that was number one number two tom i had a, I had a similar uh, similar thought as you. Um, I'm just looking at the number of Tuesdays that are on here, and I think we, I think the proposed committee included um, potentially the town manager and the police chief. We're we're going to run into a lot of select board conflicts, um, and that you know they're also going to be in the midst of budgets. So um, the the amendment to your amendment, which isn't formally an amendment yet, Tom, that I would <laughs> offer would be um, would would be you know what if what if the application deadline were the Wednesday. And we stuck with Monday for the screening committee. Um, you know, I think that means that puts those last few days sort of squarely in a work week. Uh, you know, folks are back from vacation, um, and and keeps the rest of the uh, rest of the uh, schedule here on track. So I I didn't ask for the motion yet because I wanted to just get the initial input. Uh, so let's we'll just get uh, there's two more. Uh, we have Carla and Aaron, and then after Aaron, we'll have. Uh, Tom read a motion and then we can further discuss that and decide what we want to do. If that's all right with the committee. Carla. Right. I, I would like to withdraw my request to <laughs> to push it out two weeks. I, sh I set off a storm there and I didn't I did mean to. We can we can move along. I'm good. You guys put in a lot of thought into this whole process. Um, I do see value in potentially changing that Tuesday, that Tuesday time frame because of select board meetings, but um, I'm good with the four week time frame. Thank you. Aaron. I just wanted to clarify our our the school committee budget dates are the January 7th, 14th, 21st and 25th. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. And when I read these screening committee dates. Um, I was not assuming those were all evenings. Is the assumption that they're all evenings? That that will be up to the uh, screening committee when they when they organize and have a chair, they can determine that how what works best for them. Great. Right. Okay. Right, Dorothy. Is that that's kind of how that works? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely the screening committee would make decisions on the time. Um, I can say typically. It is the evening. 
Okay. Thank you. Okay, Tom, do you want to read a, a motion? I'll okay. read the official motion and then we can make amendments okay, where necessary. Yeah. So move to approve the proposed timeline for superintendent search. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion now? Tom? <laughs> move to amend the proposed timeline, the superintendent search to change the application deadline from Monday, January 4th to Wednesday, January 6th, 2021. Second. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Would we then need to change the screening committee orientation or not necessarily? No, that can happen before the application deadline. That's not a problem. Okay. Okay, I guess we're uh, ready for a vote. You want, can you just read that one more time, Tom? Just yeah, move to amend the proposed timeline for superintendent search to change the application deadline from Monday, January 4th to Wednesday, January 6th, 2021. Okay, uh, Carla. Aye. Aaron. Aye. Sean. Aye. John? Aye. Tom? Aye. Chuck? Aye. Okay. Okay. You'll vote on the official, on the regular motion, Chuck? Uh, any other yes. Comments? Dorothy, I, I do have a question, sorry. As far as the, the site visits and interviews, how are you seeing those done uh, in COVID times? Um, we, last spring, um, did a lot of site visits and interviews virtually um, with uh, when we when the site visits occurred bringing the candidate to um, the district we set up a whole bunch of meetings of the different stakeholder groups for them to talk to and spend some time with um, and when the site visit was the, the like the Reading School Committee to the candidates district we did sort of a flip or a mirror image of that. The candidate would set up the stakeholder groups for the Reading School Committee to talk to and the Times and uh, we um, zoomed back and forth or Microsoft teamed back and forth. Um, it actually turned out, um, it turned out well because I think in some instances, particularly with conversations with various stakeholders, um, they, because they were maybe because they were in their home or they didn't have to travel or something, they actually, the conversations seemed quite rich. Um, uh, um, and so there was a really good feeling about what was accomplished on those, on the site visits. Thank you. Yeah. And the interviews, the same thing, you know, they were, their interviews were over, uh, you know, were virtual. Um, in fact, um, people by the end of the process seemed quite comfortable hiring a superintendent that they'd actually never met in person. Any other discussion? Okay, ready for the vote. Uh, John? Aye. Tom? Aye. Sean? Aye. Carla? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Chuck, I. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, now we'll uh, <coughs> put the online survey up now. Sure. There's two copies or two versions, I suppose. Um, so we can go through those, but that's up right now. If you can see it. Yes. So can I make a suggestion um, for this discussion? Um, because this can, I think, sometimes get to be an involved discussion. Um, I wonder if it makes sense for me to hear the feedback in the discussion and then draft uh, a, a survey, uh, a completed survey based on this discussion that would um, go to um, Chuck and Tom for their approval to move forward with it when we start the focus groups and survey. 
I'm fine with that if, if, if everyone else is. The idea being to synthesize the feedback you've heard tonight, Dorothy, into a final final draft survey, essentially. Yes. Right. Yes. Feedback exactly. being what type of how do we want to qualitatively grab it? How do we want to quali quantitatively grab the feedback, etc.? Um, and in what format? Whether it's you know an online tool, whether it's written, or or whatever else the case may be. Well, it will. Um, it um, generally it's an online tool. That generally you know the focus groups are in person. The survey is a survey monkey. Okay. Um, document, but with two choices, um, it's more a matter of, you know, have we in looking at the categories that you want, have we captured all the different categories that you want people to identify themselves? And then, you know, so because the two surveys have a little bit of a different flavor in terms of picking from a list or um, ranking criteria, sort of which direction do you want to go there or is there a mix that you see that you'd like? Does that make sense? Yep. OK, so I didn't I don't think any I didn't see any objections to that suggestion. So why don't we do that? Do so you want to kind of walk through each? Yeah, I mean, there's there's some areas where there there's similarity. Um, between the two surveys and generally um, when I put together two survey or surveys, I think about two aspects of it. One is sort of setting the table with what are the strengths and the challenges that you see in your district um, and that sets the table a little bit for then what kind of a leader would be successful there. Um, and that gets into, you know, what's the leader's background? What's the leader's skill uh, set that would be helpful and so forth? Okay. So one of the things I noticed, um, sorry, Chuck, I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> That's right. uh, one of the things I noticed is different between the two, and I'd be curious to get the feedback of the rest of the committee was um, you know, whether or not we would do a critically important, relatively unimportant type scale for all these different types of experiences, or whether we ask people to pick, you know, the top one, two, three, four, five um, based skills that we're looking for. Uh, we can get completely different feedback in in those different types. And so if you look at this one in particular, it's the critically important versus relatively important, and it's basically the entire set of you know, uh, types of skills you're looking for versus the other one, which is more of a, you know, give me, please select the five most significant um, type of things. Um, most important, please identify the top five skills. So, right, you're asking them to pick five. So it's a it's a different means of, gra ga of grabbing survey feedback. Um, I'm of the mind more data is good personally, so I like the critically important on, you know, not necessarily important view, um, but I'd, I'd be curious to see the rest of the feedback because I think that that kind of grain in the way you look at the survey is a fundamental difference between the two. Um, and I'd be curious to hear what everybody else thinks. Uh, uh, Sean. Yeah, um, I, I, I do. I prefer the the Likert scale, um, kind of the Likert scale version, the first version um, over the second one. I, I agree with you, Tom. I, you know, I think that the the depth of the data will be good. Um, Dorothy, I don't know, and I don't want to create this like impossible Qualtrics task, um, but I don't know if it's possible to think about, um, you know, maybe some branching logic where if they if they chose so many, you know, so many responses is critically important. We present those responses and ask, you know, ask for the the two or three priorities or something along those lines, right? Um, um, I'd have to think about how that would work in practice. But um, and then the second question that I had or the second uh, thing I wanted to ask was how um, how public, if at all, are the are the survey responses going to be? Um, would you know, would we have access? Would the screening committee have access to the actual the actual raw data, not necessarily the names attached to them, but the raw data itself? Okay, so first of all, the surveys would be anonymous, so right. names wouldn't be attached. Okay. Um, and the um, 
The survey results would be available to the committee and to the screening committee. Um, the only thing that you know, if there are if there are comments that are um, inappropriate, those are removed. Sure. OK. Uh, John. Uh, I'm going to agree with Tom on this, actually, with the first one. Um, I, I think this is going to give us a, a, a ranking of what is important in the community and in the parents. Um, and we'll be able to see that in the data that it's collecting. I will say, you know, the 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 um, one with the critically important to relatively unimportant is something new that we started using more recently. Um, a little bit of a fear when we first started using it that people would just put that everything was critically important, um, but but that's not the way it turned out. People did um, actually um, put some thought into how they felt about the different aspects of things. Uh, Aaron. I, I'm going to agree. Um, I think the first one gives us more. Um, gives us more data, gives us more specific data. Um, you know, I, I can recall filling out surveys for other things when it says, you know, you can only pick this number and I want to pick more than that number. Um, not necessarily everything, but so I would I would hate to set something up where we exclude the ability to get information. Um, but then even beyond that, I, I like the idea that they get to rank. How how important they think that is because then we have the ability um, and I assume we can differentiate by parents and and teachers and administrators. Um, however, they identify themselves in the beginning, but um, I like the idea of really being able to see what's what's most important to them, but what's also important to them. Um, yes, you would be able to differentiate by um, how they describe themselves in the first question. Sean. Um, given that it sounds like we're somewhat coalescing around the first survey, I did want to highlight I do really like question nine in the second survey, um, which doesn't appear in the first one, which what questions would you like the search committee to ask of a superintendent candidate? Um, I think that'd be really useful food for thought as we, you know, as, as the search committee approaches those interviews. So um, recognizing it puts us into 11 questions, it might be worth considering that. That's not a problem at all. OK. Anyone else? Tom? Just to build agreement, I would agree with Sean's point on that one as well. Um, it is good to see what other what other people may think, even if they don't make the search committee or they can't commit the time. You know, the, the, the big type of questions that would be important for their for the community to understand and the committee to consider. OK, I don't see anyone else, so it sounds like Dorothy, we're going to go with the, the first version. With uh, I think in terms of just the only change in the questions would be uh, what what Sean suggested. Yeah, adding the 11th question. Yep. Yes. Chuck, before we close this down, I'm curious to yep. know. I don't have anything in particular myself, but there are some differences in terms of the rank versus, you know, critically in terms of the, the actual categories portions of those questions. Is there anything in there that anybody feels like needs to be included in in the specific experiences um, question or, you know, personal characteristics question that maybe was not in the other one. I don't remember exactly what I what I saw as different, but I felt like there was one or two differences in there. Sean. Um, not uh, short answer to your question, Tom, for me is no. But one thing that I was thinking about from a like strictly a content perspective um, Dorothy, I don't know how committed you are to the the sequencing of the um, of the choices here, but like on question seven, for instance, 
where it asks about specific experience and skill areas that could be important. Um, it doesn't quite hit me right that that the last four are sort of all about, um, you know, uh, sort of experience with or affinity for or whatever, you know, whatever phrase you want to use for sort of underrepresented marginalized groups like I'd maybe like those to appear in a different order or mix it up or, ran, you know, randomize it or whatever that could look like. Um, it just hit me a little bit funny to see those at the bottom. Yes, I could absolutely change the order and right. make it a little more random. Thank you. Anyone else? OK. Sorry, one quick question. Is sure. there anything about I'm just I'm just trying to look quickly at what's different. Is there anything about staff evaluation in the survey one we're talking about going with? If not, nope. can we can we add that? Yes, I, looking quickly, I don't see it. Would you add it to human resource management? Um, I, yeah, would that go to question seven or question eight and the other one? I would say six or seven actually. Six. Yeah, yeah, it is part of human. It's a little skills and experience management, though. I do. I think it's a more specific skill, so I I think it's important to include. Yeah, just human resource management and and staff evaluation, something along those lines. You mean? Um, or even its own line item. Okay, I agree with that. Yep, so add, so add it to the list, not combine it with something else. Correct. That, that yes. would be yep. my preference. Yep. OK. And Aaron, you were specific. You're specifically six is the question you would add that to, correct? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We do have a Q&A, um, Chuck. Um, okay. Actually, one, there's two. One was from earlier, um, which we did sort of address. I just wanted to publish it so everybody's there from J Dar Jeffrey Quorum. There are a number of meetings in January. That's usually when SC does the budget review. Will there be a conflict? And the answer to that, I think we address, but we've specifically scheduled around the budget meeting so there won't be a conflict. Correct. Um, there's one more of a gentleman wanting to volunteer for the focus groups as a community member, um, which we'll have to send out the emails. I guess that or the, the notification, I guess that actually brings up a good question. Uh, we're not to focus groups yet, so maybe we can talk about it then, but how do we reach the community if they're not on one of the school listers? Um, that's that's a constant question we get asked during school committee debates as well, <laughs> right? How do you reach the community? Uh, this gentleman, David Corey, said I'd like to be part of the focus groups as a community member. Um, so that's a that's a thing we can work through when we get to the focus group question. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to work with staff to figure out how we can. Uh, to your point, reach other than the the normal school channels. That yep, may be so, our social media, you know. Yep. Yep, social media, um, counting on any local newspapers um, on the on the town website, any any way you can think of to get the word out. Thanks, Tom. OK, you want to? move on to uh, focus group composition. So just to just to clarify, um, I will make the changes that the committee talked about 
get them to Tom and Chuck for their approval and then we'll be good to go. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll I can start this or actually did you I mean it's there we know what it's so uh, I, I thought about this a little more after we talked about this last week and uh, I, I, I think we should have a member of the Board of Selectmen appointed by the Board of Selectmen on there. Are we on the focus group for the screening committee, Chuck? Oh, I'm sorry. We're not on the screening committee. <laughs> sorry. Focus group discussion. Go ahead. Go ahead, so, Dora. Um, so I had a chance to talk with Gail a little bit about the different focus groups that w that Chuck and Tom and I talked about um, and looking at what we could do for scheduling. What we talked about um, was having for the staff uh, because we want to make sure we give the staff multiple opportunities to participate um, that we could have um, two sessions on Friday the 13th, one for the elementary at the end of their day and one for the high school at the end of their day, given that that was a partial day. Um, and then two other sessions that were at some point during the weekdays, one that was particularly um, aimed at the middle school and another one for the elementary school, given that you have a large number of elementary, you know, a large number of elementary school staff, given that you have five elementary schools. Um, and then, you know, generally what we say for the different staff focus groups is, you know, we're aiming them for a particular level, but you're welcome to join whichever one you have the time and capacity to join. Um, we thought for the administration that that could be coordinated with one of the DLT meetings, um, either before the scheduled meeting on Tuesday, after the scheduled meeting, um, whatever worked out best. Um, students, we thought it could be uh, about because we assume that's mostly high school students that would participate um, that that could be scheduled for 3.30 on a weekday afternoon. So they're a little bit after the end of their school day. Um, they can uh, take a break from the end of the school day and then jump into the um, focus groups. Um, for the town staff, uh, Gail thought that probably the best way to do that was arrange um, with the town side on what the best time for that was. Um, and then for parents, um, when we looked at the different parent groups, um, we did bring out that, you know, if people are jumping onto a, um, a virtual meeting, we really won't know if they're actually middle school, elementary, high, CPAC or METCO parents, um, that we could have a mix of day and evening times um, and anyone could come to any session. Um, and then uh, the open community forum, we would find an evening time um, for community members to jump on. And then once again, if a parent can't join any of the parent sessions but wants to jump onto the community one, they'd be able to do that. So just fleshing out a little bit more, um, not only what the groups are, but how many we might schedule for the different groups and when they would be. Thank you, John. Chuck, I'm going to drop my hand for now. OK, uh, Sean. Um, well, one question I had was addressed um, by Dorothy, your comments about how you'd schedule the staff meetings. I just want to make sure that the rise uh, staff schedules are taken into account as well, the preschool. Um, and then um, and then the second one around the administration, how do you navigate or in, in your experience, how do you navigate um, working in situations where you know you might have staff or administrators that apply, are planning to apply for the position? Um, generally, we would um, count on their um, count on them to know they were applying and excuse themselves from the focus group. OK. Anyone else on the focus groups? OK. Now we can.
can so is that, uh, that's a thumbs up. Yeah, Good. so thumbs there up. is agreement. I would continue to work with Gail on getting them all scheduled. We could do that yeah. in the next day or so and get the word out. Um, again, any any avenue that you have to get the word out and the schedule out to the community, to parents, to staff is take advantage of them all. Chuck, can we reach out to Laura Jem and see if she can send a blast out as well? Because she's got the town list. Yep. That might be more effective than, than just you in the school list in the newspaper. Yep. There's also the Town of Reading Facebook page um, that we, Laura doesn't administer, but we could we could work through that path, I would assume. We, Gail, yes? Yes, I can also work with um, Jane Miller, who does a lot of the town communication that I was going to, once this was set, reach out and see what I could tap into from their side, because we work very closely on other communications. Thank you. Uh, John, to your question too, I can make a short announcement at town meeting uh, where I believe a lot of Laura Gems list comes, you know, that is a lot of those people, so. Well, she's got the list serve Chuck that actually gives her access to anybody that's signed up for any type of announcements. Okay. So. Aaron raised her hand. Aaron. Yeah, I, I just wanted to reiterate that I, I think we're, we're well aware not everyone uses social media, so I just want to make sure that we're reaching out to the community beyond um, just using Facebook. So I I like John's idea of, of seeing um, perhaps what, what Laura is willing to use um, for the town side. And again, I know you have a newspaper. I'm not sure if it's a daily or a weekly, but getting something to them um, would all be another way to um, publicize the group groups. We do, and that actually brings up an interesting question: is that the URL for these Zoom meetings can't be, you know, 200 characters long to do that? So, you know, does it? We can use like what is it, Bitly or something like that to create a short URL that people could type in that actually gets there. But from that perspective, does that open up any other security concerns in these in these forums for you, Dorothy? Are you comfortable handling a more broad publication like that? Uh, comfortable doing that. OK. OK. We would need to. Um, I guess one just administrative thing that I can work out with Gail is who's actually setting up the links, um, whether it's whether I do it or whether it's done on your end. But I, I think that that's a that's a Gail and Dorothy question that we don't <laughs> need to settle right here. Right. OK. OK. So Chuck, now. Now yes. we're on the preliminary screening committee composition. <laughs> Yeah, so as I started this, as I thought about it, I and I just throw this out uh, is maybe we should consider adding a member of the board of selectmen appointed by or selected by the board of selectmen on that. I had one other follow up thought, um, which is it's very um, common more common than not to also have a building leader a building principal on the preliminary screening committee and we when we talked uh before we did not have that um position on the list okay dorothy you just answered my question so thank you i think that's something that having a member of the dlt um building principal is, is key um Absolutely. So that would be in addition to the one administration member? Yes, the administration member would be uh, probably a central office administrator. Right. Okay. So I do, when you talk about having a member of the board of selectmen, would you also have the town manager or would you have the BOS instead of the town I, manager? I would say both. 
they bring different. Uh, I mean, they come di different. I mean, ones that being an elected official works working with the superintendent, and then the town manager's. Uh, you know, and obviously more of an employee to employee type relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we add those two positions, that keeps the balance that we talked about. Um, it gets it up to 15 members and I wouldn't want to get any bigger than that. Right. I was just thinking about that when we started this, we targeted 11 members as the ideal composition. So we've added four additional as part of the process. Four or two? Well, two to this, but we end, you know, oh, when right, we, right. from our initial target from the discussions. Um, I guess the only other point of clarification I, I have in terms of um, my initial feedback was I had originally written one METCO slash uh, parent of color. It doesn't necessarily have to be METCO in, in, in my mind. Um, could be a Reading resident. Um, but I'm open to feedback on that from the rest of the, the committee as well. There is obviously a pretty good po population um, from the METCO side, but I just wanted to make sure we weren't specifically excluding. Of course, they could be included in any of the other categories as well. Um, I just wanted to make sure we thought about that properly. Aaron? Um, I'm wondering if it was a, a conscious decision to have five parents. Because um, obviously the, the CPAC parent is probably either going to be rise, elementary, middle, or high, and the METCO parent is going to be elementary, middle, or high. So you could have some overlap there. Um, but we also don't have rise represented there. We don't have our preschool age represented. The initial conversation was balancing um, between to get to that 11, just some background for the rest of the committee was balancing to get the 11 and balancing staff versus parents. So we had three and three, and then we thought a little further and we said CPAC and METCO. Um, obviously this, you know, as Sean pointed out as well in the focus groups, we, we missed rise unfortunately in that conversation there too. Your point about rise could be in a CPAC parent um, is certainly possible. Maybe we're maybe we're less restrictive in this, and this is just kind of a, a general category because you could have a parent who's both rise and elementary, or rise and middle as well. And this is just kind of a, more of a guideline of we want five parents, and we want some combination of these categories of uh, of coverage to make sure we don't miss a level. And rise is a missing level to that point. But maybe it's five with some categorization covering these 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 sub, sub subgroups, I guess is a, a better way to put it. We're also missing rise in staff. Staff, so. yeah. Which puts it to 17 if we add them on both sides, um, which. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was going to suggest, um, I mean, Chuck, I know where you're coming from thinking about a select board member. I, you know, we've got two elected officials already on the committee, you know, via the school committee. I don't know how directly our select board members typically work with the superintendent. Uh, that feels less critical to me. Um, you know, I would I would prefer um, I would prefer adding a rise staff member um, and maybe losing the select board member, which would keep us at, at an odd number. Um, and I recognize we wouldn't have an explicit role for a rise parent. Um, but Tom, as you alluded to, I mean, they're, they're, you know, decent chance we get a parent who covers RISE plus um, or a parent who's a RISE, you know, who has who's a RISE alumni. Um, so I'd feel OK about that if we could represent RISE on the staff side. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I just was. Uh, well, you, you said you knew where I was. So, you, yeah, I wasn't. It was more. Just as this being a high profile position and just making sure that the senior leaders of the town all had a stake stake in it. So could Chuck, 
yeah. let's go back to the focus group real quick. Could the select board member be added to the the town staff uh, focus group, and that way at least they're covered? I think our assumption was that that would that even though we said staff that it would fold in um, other town officials if they if they wanted to participate. So so in theory, we would have input from select board by by including them in town staff under the focus group. Yeah, and I guess you know to be a little more specific in town staff, what we're really thinking about is more department heads. Um, so, you know, uh, elected officials would fit well under that umbrella. I'd be comfortable with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I agree with, with, you know, Aaron's uh, comment that we need to get rise that, that I missed that as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to, you know, say let's, let's keep it at the 15 and and uh, take the select board out and put the rise in. We also can, I mean, it may happen this way. It doesn't have to happen this way, but you know, there are select board members that have, that are parents as well. So that they may slide yeah. into one of those slots as a parent, not as a select board member, potentially. Uh, that may, may address it potentially as well. We don't have to target that necessarily, but if it ends up that way, so be it, it ends up that way. Um, so to summarize then where we where we adjusted is we added um, one principal in addition to one central office administrator. We added one additional staff member with that being rise. Um, and we've kind of changed. We've said there's five parents, but they fit this mix of these categories in some way, shape or form, right? Right. Elementary, preschool, middle school, high school, CPAC and um, Medco slash parent of color. Um, is that a, essentially where we stand right now? Can we can we say five parents, but have rise be a box that we're going to check? Yeah, we, we we'd add it in there. You mean? Yeah, like like yeah. we're going to give preference to an elementary parent that also has a child at rise versus an elementary parent that is strictly elementary. Like we, we want to make sure in, in whomever the five parents are we choose that they that we check off elementary, middle, high school, CPAC, Metco and RISE in some way, shape or form, because a lot of people are going to check multiple boxes yeah. as much well, as possible. Think, well, and certainly a CPAC parent is going to have a student at one of those levels. So. Yeah. As well as a Metco parent, so right. Sean, I was essentially going to say the same thing as Aaron. Who um who makes who makes the selections from among interested applicants? So we talked we we uh, Chuck, Tom, and I talked about that. And typically, um, there's a small group that makes the selection and recommends to the full committee the slate. So ultimately, the school committee approves the screening committee. But as the selection process to bring a recommended slate, um, it makes sense for your executive search committee to to look at all the the, in, the letters of interest and bring that slate to you for your approval. Sorry, Dorothy, I, I realized I phrased it poorly and it probably sounded like the newbiest question ever. What I actually was asking was um, was who like if we have 50 parent applicants, who chooses the five that participate in the selection committee? So ultimately the school committee, okay. um, but to, as a step to get there, um, uh, the process I would propose is that you again, um, take Tom and Chuck as your executive search, you know, your search executive committee to bring a, a recommended slate to you, narrowing that 50 down to the five. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure we're still saying the same thing. I'm asking about how we <coughs> the people that participate on the screening committee, not the actual superintendent. Are we are we talking about the same thing? Yes. So I so, so I think so. Okay. All right. So okay. Yes. Yes. So ultimately, yes, the school committee also selects the screening committee. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. So 
Sean, we would come back to you with with or we, we would come back to the or I would come back to the committee with a proposed uh, screening committee to be voted on by the school committee. OK, thank you. Aaron. Is that a conversation that happens in executive session or is that a public conversation? That's a public conversation. OK, and you would have other names if for some reason. One of us had a concern about someone you were proposing or. Thought there was a mismatch or I, I can't fathom. I'm just. So I mean that could be handled a number of ways. Um, the school committee could see all the applicants along with the recommendation um, so that you would be able to, I guess, confirm the recommendation. I would like to see all the applicants. That, I that's, know, the way I would, that's the way I would propose we do it, Dorothy, so mm -hmm. that everybody sees the list that the uh, finalists came from. That makes yep. sense. Yep. That does make sense. It's just sometimes an easier, uh, you know, sort of in the in the sort of narrowing it down a, a smaller group to knowing the will of the school committee to sort of narrow it down and bring a recommendation rather than right. have full school committee just start the whole discussion. That could take multiple nights. <laughs> Carla, do you have a question? You're muted. Oh. Carla raised her hand phys oh, I didn't physically. See it. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's, that's all right. Um, so I, I think you, you answered my question, Dorothy, but it sounds like to me the um, we will ask people to show um, interest by submitting a letter mm -hmm. and then Tom and so all those applicants will put their names in the hat. Tom and Chuck will along with you will kind of sort through those and come up with a proposed list yep. of a committee of a um, screening committee and then they will submit that to the entire committee but we will have access to um, all applicants and then we will have a discussion on that in open session on and um, have a discussion and then vote on it. Yes. OK, yes. thank you. Yep, yep. They, and t typically, you know, the, the letter goes out from the chair and it just um, it says, you know, please tell us what group you would, you know, that you would like to represent from the list of people on the screening committee. Tell us you know, a little bit about yourself that lets us, you know, have some idea of the, the contribution you can make. Um, and then here are the dates that are reserved. Please make sure that you don't apply unless you know you're available all those dates. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So the screening committee is, is uh, Probably something that should have a motion and a vote to finalize. It, it does. It does. Tom, did you have that? So I have the motion and then we'll make the amendments if we as we've talked about as well, okay. just following the same plan we just did. So um, move to approve the proposed screening committee composition and recruitment plan. Um, where the recruitment plan this that that's the end of the motion. The recruitment plan is the letter that that um, Dorothy just talked about that Chuck will write. Um, so the motion again is move to approve the proposed screening committee composition and recruitment plan. Second. Okay. Any amendments? So the amendments, um, I'm going to have to type this out so I don't get it wrong, but um, move to amend the screening committee composition to add one building principal, one rise staff member, and while keeping five parents, add the category of rise parent to the parent list. Second. Any other discussion on that? Okay, uh, 
Hearing none. Uh, Aaron? Aye. Tom? Aye. Sean? Aye. John? Aye. Carla? Aye. Chuck? Aye. Okay. Uh, back to the main motion. Uh, is there any other discussion on that? Seeing none, uh, Tom? Aye. John? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Sean? Aye. Carla? Aye. Chuck? Aye. Okay. That was it. Uh, Do we have any other? I get it. We do have another Q&A, yeah. it looks like. Um, looks like Sean has already addressed it as well. Um, but it was anonymous, so we can't publish it. What's that? It was anonymous, so we can't publish it for our policy. But we've addressed it as part of the conversation. Okay. I didn't see it. I don't. It doesn't show up on mine for some reason. So the last um, item for tonight is really a discussion. There's no decisions to be made, but just sort of to get you thinking um, about where we go next. Um, we have, as I said, we have already um, started to let people know that this opening is going to happen. Um, and part of our recruitment strategy um, is to develop a brochure um, that will be disseminated, obviously, electronically um, for uh, on our website, on um, the superintendent's website, it goes out to all our counterpart um, organizations in all 50 states. Um, in the past, when people were not as attuned to um, uh, looking, uh, not virtually is not the right word, looking on the internet for public, uh, for positions, um, we would print and mail brochures as well. Um, what we found in the past couple years is that people get as many applications and the same quality of applications without the cost of the printing and mailing, um, and certainly without the cost of advertising in various publications like Education Week or the Boston Globe. Um, that's not where people who are looking for positions tend to look now. Um, they look more at the specific sites and wait. We also have a list of Roughly a thousand um, people that we send when there's an announcement of, an, of a vacancy or an opening or uh, an application period that we send to that list as well. So um, we can, using um, technology, get the um, get the recruitment, get the word out about the position um, pretty expeditiously and pretty widely. Um, so I, I talked briefly again with Gail today about what we would need for the brochure, um, some of the basic background about, you know, how many students in the district, what is, you know, what is your budget, what is your staffing, you know, look like, um, and um, then we also collect up maybe some pictures of um, activity in the district, and we um, put in a, like a community profile that tells people a little bit about Reading and the Reading Public Schools um, to attract them to the district. Um, and that happens whether whether you're printing it or whether it's only going to be um, online, that brochure is still developed to go out. So I guess part of the decision to just to get you thinking tonight about um, what is your thought about do you want to go with the printing or do you want to stay totally um, tech, using technology to get the word out? And it's, it's actually just something to think about. You don't need to, you know, we have time um, to to keep to um, key this all up. So it's not a decision to make tonight. The other part that I tell you about what's coming down the line is after we finish the focus groups and the online survey, we take that information and put it into a report for you. And using that report, um, is where you will start to think about um, 
what how do we want to advertise the position how do we want to describe who we're looking for and that becomes part of the advertising materials as well does that make sense to everybody any questions Tom. <laughs> yeah um so that makes sense uh completely and i guess my next my question is really kind of the follow-on of that is that's the marketing of what we're looking for. That's the category of what we're looking for. Are we are we then going to suggest, and maybe this goes back to the screening committee, so I apologize for asking for it late, that there's a, a rubric of sorts that's built based upon that that the screening committee uses um, as part of the interview process to, to check off that the cat the categories that we're looking for are fit. Yes, we can we can build that um, and and for the screening committee to be to consider as they're as they're a as they're thinking about what questions do we ask the candidates and b how do we evaluate the responses that we get from the questions great thank you and just to add a little bit to that so part of the charge of the screening committee is to take what the school committee has described and who they're looking for and find the match from what the school committee wants to the the candidates that they're interviewing it's not that the screening committee makes that decision. Their, their charge is to find the candidates that best describe what the school committee has identified as what the successful candidate would look like, if that makes sense. Yep. Dorothy, is there any is there any benefit to not being all digital on this? Because I mean everything else is the application's going to be digital. Why would we want to have a printed brochure? I guess uh, doesn't make well, a lot of sense. Well, I mean, I me. guess I guess those who have come before you have decided there's not much <laughs> value in it because they're all deciding not to do it. Um, the only, you know, we there's there's a couple avenues of recruitment um, that we have um, that again sort of lean towards the don't print. Um, the, the Superintendents Association has um, an aspiring superintendents program, so they're keeping in touch with people who are coming up the ranks and are looking for that superintendent position. We, it's a program that we do somewhat together. It's led by them, um, but we know who the people are. So, you know, we're making sure that we're keeping um, in touch with those potential leaders. I think in the past, sometimes that brochure would go to a district and they would, you know, maybe they, somebody would see it and pass it along to someone they knew might be interested in a position. Um, but again, um, what we're finding is people who are interested in positions either from a neighboring state um, or within Massachusetts know the places to look um, for, the, for the postings of the positions. And certainly when we know people are looking and we think there's a match, we make sure that we make that contact and say, have you seen this opening? Anyone else? Tom? Just, I guess, just to solidify it um, from my perspective, there, there's no reason to be printing paper for this. Um, we everything we need to do these days is is online in any form. So I think we should just go forward with with the uh, the digital version and and move on from there. Okay. Well, that is is what I have for tonight. And I believe that the next time I'll see all of you then is on Monday the 23rd when the focus groups will have been done. Um, the survey responses will be in and we'll be talking about um, approving selection criteria and the materials for advertising. Chuck, we do have two, two new comments in the Q&A um, that I'll uh, yep. publish and then we can read them appropriately. They are with a name appropriately. So for Shirella Lestrade, two comments. One, a medical parent should be represented because they have a different outlook and qualification than a resident. 
And two, is there any reason we can't just promote the assistant super we have and look to hire a new assistant super? Uh, so I think the to her to Sheila's uh, Sharilla's uh, first comment, we've already addressed that where we're we're going to have we would like to have a Medco parent represented, uh, and uh, to her uh, second question. Uh, that's a that's a pretty uh, that would be a long a long long discussion. I mean, we uh, we as a committee, I guess, decided that we were going to uh, do a search. That doesn't mean that the uh, current assistant superintendent uh, isn't going to apply or can't apply it. Uh, it and but uh, we we felt that uh, you know as a committee we we should for the community conduct a search so that's that's why we didn't just uh, uh, immediately elevate the assistant superintendent to superintendent if anyone else wants to add to that that's my head is right on that. So just to give you an, another couple things to think about, when you approve the screening committee, you'll also need to approve a charge to the screening committee, which would include how many finalists you want them to bring to you. Usually it's a range. Um, usually it's three to five. Um, and then um, you would want to think about, you know, are there any other instructions you want to give the screening committee about um, um, automatically granting an interview to any um, internal applicants that apply or any residents that apply. Okay, that's good. Good to know. Anyone else? Well, thank you, Dorothy. This is very You're good. Very and we met your. Uh, Deadline or your next. I'd actually get a chance to have a bite to eat. To eat. My next meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. Well, Ooh. you're welcome. And if any questions come up, please feel free to be in touch. And um, I'm sure that Gail and I will be communicating pretty regularly from this point forward. Is there a uh, motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, John? Aye. Carla? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Sean? Aye. Tom? Aye. Chuck? Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Gail. Thanks, Gail. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks.